10 of Super Rugby is done and dusted. You know what that means? It is time for the power rankings. The numbers are all in. Uh, teams have been ranked. Uh, pretty much every team uh, moves, except for a few old favorites. So the one and only Sunwolves remain in 15th. It's not going to change, is it? Eight wins, sorry, eight losses, eight wins they wish. Eight losses on the bounce. Another game against the New Zealand team coming up. They saved a bit of face, like I said in the review, against the Crusaders. But um, yeah, we're halfway through the season. They've played half of their games. They haven't had a win. They've picked up two losing bonus points. It is not a good state of affairs uh, with the Sunwolves at the moment. Next, following a loss to the Highlanders, and another old favourite at the bottom of the board, uh, is the Blues. Two wins, six losses. A pretty poor record in anyone's books, let alone a franchise which, you know, used to be competing for top honours. Seems like a very long time ago now. <clears throat> and um, the idea of them getting anywhere out of this bottom row seems like a very distant prospect. So, um, yep, still poor from them. If anything, they're consistently poor. Uh, next, and another non-changer. Uh, the Reds, same as last week, it's another loss. This one hurt a bit more because it was a loss at home and uh, they didn't really get going in the first half, which would be disappointing. So uh, three wins, five losses. Give Brad Thorne time, see what he can do in a couple of years, but they're just looking a bit one-dimensional at the moment and it doesn't seem to be paying uh, paying off, but um, you know, it's still still early days, so he's only halfway through his first season, so we will not judge him too early. Next, down two spots, uh, rounding out a team from South Africa, New Zealand, and Australia, plus the one from Japan, uh, is the Stormers. Nothing's going right for the Stormers this season, is it? Um, it's just... It's just another loss on the road, and I keep harping on about them having a tough schedule, and I know they do, but um, yeah, you need to win at least some away games to be competitive in Super Rugby to, to kind of push for those, uh, you know, playoff games. But um, it's it's looking a pretty distant prospect for the Stormers as well. Uh, you, you'd have one eye on next season definitely, and um, hopefully the coach will be looking at some of the younger guys who are. You know, still going to be on contract next year and maybe give them some game time because this season's pretty much a write-off at that point. So that's the bottom row. Uh, three three the same and one newcomer. So uh, we'll see who the next to kind of make a bolt out of the bottom is um, because there have been a few teams who looked destined uh, to stay in the bottom but have actually gone on to improve their results. Uh, next, and a team which probably is lucky not to be in the bottom row... Brumbies also down two spots. Them and the Stormers are pretty much neck and neck. Um, but yeah, Brumbies home loss. It was close, but um, you know they were never in a position to win it at the end. It was only just trying to get a bonus point to to kind of salvage something from the game. But uh, yeah, again, it's another team who is just it's not their season. First year coach, uh, give them more time. Stormers don't have that luxury of having a first year coach, but. Uh, the circumstances in which he's been coaching this year have been pretty harsh, so I'm loath to be too hard on him, but then again, it's a results-based game. So, uh, yeah, that's where we are at. Uh, next, and jumping out of the bottom row, is the Sharks. The Sharks are the team who, uh, so far this season, have been very Jekyll and Hyde. Um, we didn't get a, a outstanding performance or a really shocking performance from them this week, but they did enough to get a win. Two teams that didn't play that well, but they managed to just edge it. So, uh, win over the Stormers at home makes their record three wins, five losses, and a draw. Still not pretty reading, um, given where the Sharks were kind of predicted to finish at the start of the season. So, still disappointing, but um, they've got half the season or maybe just under half for them to um, to try and, try and write things. But um, yeah, it looks like a pretty long road to the playoffs for the Sharks as well. 
Next, in a team who, if you can believe it, used to be in 14th spot for, for quite some time, uh, is the Jaguares. So, improved performances from them. Uh, one of the big bolters, kind of over the last couple of weeks. Four wins, five losses. They've almost evened up their record, and their record was pretty atrocious at one point. So, yeah, kudos to them. They've stuck with it. They've not let their heads kind of get down. They've used this tour of Australia to kind of, I guess, come together. And, um, yeah, it's, it's showing in the results. So, uh, yeah, definitely improved performances. And we will see how they go in New Zealand, which is always a different prospect. But, um, hey, if, if they're kind of on the up, we'll see if they can keep it going. Next, and a team who've kind of gone from the opposite trajectory of the Jaguars. So these guys used to be pretty much top and bottom. Now they're meeting in the middle. Uh, it's the Melbourne Rebels. Down one spot. Their record has evened out now. So four wins, four losses. Um, yeah, those first few rounds are, are, are a distant memory at the moment because um, it's another loss for the Rebels. Um, Still behind the Waratahs by not much because the Waratahs also lost, but it just means the Rebels have got to pick up a win somewhere, and at the moment it's not looking very likely. Uh, I'm not sure what the coach is going to do to try and shift things around, whether he'll uh, make selection changes or, um, you know, kind of swing the axe, or if he'll just stick with his guns and rely on the process. We'll see. We've seen what they can do, but they haven't been able to do it recently. So, one to watch. Up into seventh. And an amazing turnaround, similar to the Jaguares, is the Bulls. The Bulls have also evened out their record, four wins, four losses. And the Bulls were down at the bottom next to the Blues for a long time. So, I shouldn't focus on the Blues, but the Blues have got no excuse. Other teams have turned things around and managed to pick up some wins. The Blues not yet able to do so. I mean, Blues are going through. Stop going on about the Blues. So, the Bulls are doing pretty well. They've come back and um, young team is kind of coming together and really showing that they, they can really throw the ball around and, you know, threaten teams in ways which we don't traditionally associate with the Bulls. So it's good. It puts teams at a kind of wrong foot sometimes when they're playing the Bulls at the moment because you never know what they're kind of, what they're kind of going to do. Next, the biggest drop of the week. And it was a pretty poor performance, so they deserve a big drop is the Waratahs. Uh, down four spots, like I said, um, five wins, and now two losses and a draw. Um, yeah, they had only had one loss up until this point, but uh, that was a pretty bad one. They just suffered against the um, against the Lions. That was you didn't score any points and just looked to be on the back foot for most of the game. So, yep, poor performance from the Waratahs. Uh, it was kind of a test of their credentials as a, a challenger. If they're going to be the top dog in the Aussie Conference, it was a test as to whether they could foot it with the big boys. Nope, not yet. Things to work on. Um, scoring points would be a good start. But, um, I mean, every team has an off week, but that was a really bad time to have an off week. So we'll see, we'll see how they go going forward. They've got four New Zealand teams coming up, so it could be make or break for their season. Next, up one spot is the Highlanders. Uh, good victory over a pretty poor Blues team. So the Highlanders did the business. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how much credit I can give teams anymore for beating the Blues because the Blues have been beaten many times. But um, yeah, they, they went and did it, did it away from home. So always credit for a good away win. Um, yep, see it's there moving up. They're in a playoff spot as well. I should mention that I don't usually look at the table, like the official table before I do these. I did my own little set of calculations, but I believe like the bottom, there's like five maybe teams that are pretty much exactly the same as the as the table. So yeah, I guess there's something to that. Uh, but yeah, well, um, the Highlanders are definitely in a playoff spot. I think they're in sixth. Uh, next, the Lions move up one spot. So their record's starting to look a bit more Lion-like. It was pretty average at one point in the season, but it's now 6-3-0. and oh. Uh, great start to their tour. Still got a few games to go, so they'll still need to still work hard to try and return to South Africa well in charge of the South African Conference. But um, week one, job done. So moving on to week two of the tour for them. Next, 
third spot goes to the Chiefs. No amount of injuries is stopping the Chiefs train from running. Um, six wins, two losses. Good win over the Reds away from home. Um, just, yeah, just, they just keep on going. No, no amount of injuries is going to going to stop them apparently, but um, there's two teams that have beaten them and that's the teams in one and two. So we'll see how their top kind of quality credentials uh, are on display when they when they go away to a New Zealand team, although they've already played away to most New Zealand teams. Second is the Crusaders, up one spot. Uh, a win over the Sunwolves, not enough to bump them up into first. Um, they did the business in that game. It wasn't outstanding, it was fine, it was really poor conditioned, but they got the job done, so um, can't ask for a whole lot more. I mean, you could ask them to put 50 points on, but um, in those conditions, bonus point win, take it all the way to the bank. Last, and despite having a bye, nobody able to dislodge the Hurricanes. Hurricanes, the only team to have one loss. Six win, one losses, only that one loss in the first round. Six wins on the trot, really good points differential. Looking like a team to beat, but um, yeah, I mean, you, you could see based on their performances against the Sharks and against the, the Bulls on their day, they could go down. So um, yeah, we've still got half the season to see if anyone else is able to dislodge them from kind of the top spot. Uh, if they end up winning it, it could be the Bulls are the only team that beats them this year. We'll see what happens. All right, guys, so let me know your thoughts. I always appreciate the comments. Uh, who you think should be higher, who you think should be lower, and um, yeah, I'll talk to you again soon.